as you can probably tell from where I'm driving around, I'm not in my usual haunt. So today we have something a little bit different. Well, maybe apart from the uh, brand of car. Welcome to Beards and Bangers. Good morning and welcome to Beards and Bangers. And today you join me from the West Midlands, just outside Birmingham. And uh, I'm reviewing not one Rover 75, but two. Uh, let's have a look at these lovely things behind me. So Dan has very kindly let me, uh, let me review his cars. Um, and uh, yeah, why, why, why do one when you can do two? So we've got two uh, Mark II Rover 75s here. Uh, one is uh, a Connoisseur SE on the right, so the higher spec model, and then we've got the, uh, the, the contemporary, so the more modern feeling inside on the left here. Now, um, you'll have seen my earlier video about the uh, MG ZT190 being a Rover 75 in disguise. Well, these actually are Rovers, um, Rover 75s. Um, we've got uh, we've got two V6s, so they're both they're both the petrol uh, engine V6. Um, we go back and do a little bit of history about the uh, just once again just recap on what the Rover 75 is. So uh, BMW bought uh, Rover Group in 1994, so that was the remarriage, and uh, prior to that, obviously there was the alliance with Honda. So. Um, the Rover Group had the um, the aging Rover 600, which was basically a Honda Accord, um, and they wanted to Rover wanted just to reskin the, the 600, keep that chassis, uh, and make a new kind of mid-sized uh, executive saloon. BMW didn't want that, so three designs are put forward, and the design team led by Richard Woolley. Uh, came up with the 75 so it was launched in 1998 and uh, it was available with uh, a few engine options so there was the um, there was the uh, the, the 1.8 K series there was the 2 litre KV6 and the uh, the 2.5 uh, KV6 and then a little bit later on they added the the BMW M47 diesel engine in two different power bands so that was the 115 and the 135 um, but luckily today we've got um, we've got petrol versions so I'm I'm really happy because I prefer petrol um, if I can get my hands on it uh, especially if the gin runs out it's quite useful so um, what we're going to do is just have a little look at the outside of the vehicles and then we'll um, We'll take both for a drive and see how they compare, and it's going to be interesting for me uh, to compare them to the uh, the ZT 190 because obviously they are they are related. Um, I, I guess if uh, the Rover 75 name from the P4, the Anti Rover variant, lives on, then if this is the Anti, then the ZT is the rebellious uh, nephew rather than than being siblings. So um, we've got facelift models here. So we've got the the lights. Uh, these one-piece headlights rather than the quad the quad headlamps and obviously the bumper has you know changed quite a lot so we had a much narrower grille on the on the mark one so we've got the same on both so we won't, we won't go through all the obvious features um, the uh, wheels on this are the Viking alloys and these are in really nice condition um, this being 75 we've got the we've got the trim here in chrome as it should be um, Dan has added uh, uh, the the bullet mirrors which look really nice and really suit the car um, yeah one thing I love oh he's, he's put a beards and bangers sticker in the uh, in the back window so good on good on Dan um, one thing I love is actually the rear view of these these cars um, it's just the way everything gathers into the into the boot so you know it's they're really curvaceous especially at the back end it's a it really comes nice you've got this nice shaped headlight so even you know in 2022 these these cars just still look classy um, you know they're they're competing with the 3 series BMW so BMW's own you know had competition in their own group uh, but of course the, at that time there was the the Jaguar um, 
X type as well. So they, but they still they still look fresh. I think um, some people disagree. Oh, it's Rover. It's an old man's car, but they look really fresh. But yeah, they just, everything just gathers into the boot really nicely. And I do like this full sized um, number plate. So I've actually taken the private plate off the 260, um, and that's. Uh, that's uh, I've got all ordered uh, this full size plate. I think, I think it just looks nice rather than having the the traditional sized um, number plate in there. So yeah, we got obviously diff another difference. We haven't got the spoiler uh, here. We've got this nice lip um, in chrome with Rover emblazoned across it. Got parking sensors. That's handy. So let's have a little look around this side. We've got a hub nut sticker here. So Dan's a, Dan's a hub nut fan as am I. So good 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 channel. Um, now let's have a let's have a little look inside because so this is the this is the connoisseur se which is the uh obviously the top top spec so um ostensibly the same as our 190 uh just we've got this lovely beige door card with the 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 oval speaker lots of ovals um this has got the electric uh memory seats so it's uh yeah, you get that on the SE, all the, all the various features. Um, if we jump in. Oh, it is so comfortable. Yeah, so I don't need to talk you through the interior massively. It's just uh, a sea of beige leather. And uh, this has actually got a proper walnut dash. So Dan has put a proper walnut dash in it. And this is a really well maintained, beautiful car. It's absolutely lovely. So of course, being the SE, we've got the Highline uh, stereo. So there'll be a there'll be a, um, a CD changer in the boot. We've got a cassette. What if we should have brought a cassette with me? We've got the, the climate control. So same as the same throughout the range. And then we've got heated seats. Um, uh, we've got a cigarette lighter, cup holder doesn't open, same as the ZT. We've got our ashtray down here. I don't know if I'm showing this right. No, I'm not. The ashtray's down here. Yeah, so it's, it, they really are, you know, in, internally the same. Um, obviously, the, the Connoisseur SE has got much more equipment. Um, but it's the, it's the colour, it's the, you've got the wood, you've got the, you know, this lovely wood on the steering wheel. It just feels so nice in the hand. It's, it's really, really good. This one has got a sunroof. Uh, we have a quick look up. Well, oh, wrong way. A quick look up here. We've got a sunroof up here. Doesn't appear to be any dampness whatsoever, which is good. So the seals are looked after. Let's have a look in the back. We have got a rear cup holder, which is nice. Here we are. So is that an SE feature or is that just standard in the 75? Do tell me. Do tell me. Um, yeah, so that's the that's the interior of the uh, the um, Connoisseur SE. So the club, sorry, the, the uh, contemporary is, um, I think this is, I did ask if this is Wedgwood blue, but it's actually uh, ski blue apparently. Um, So there's a little difference we've got a uh, body colored uh, trim here so that's a more more uh, aligned with the uh, the z the zts um really very similar at the front uh, we've got the bullet mirrors again let's have a little jump inside oh still very very comfy the first thing that we notice is the colours different. So rather than the beige leather we've got, we've got full leathers, um, it being a contemporary, but black, and black so all the trim is black as well. Um, we've still got the heated seats. Uh, we've got an aftermarket stereo in this one. Um, again, it's an automatic, so it's gonna be interesting for me to drive that. Um, yeah, so very similar. We still have got some wood, it's a Rover, so we've still got some wood. Uh, which Dan's actually added in himself. Um, uh, so this, I think, would just have normal plastic, um, normal plastic trim. But uh, yeah, let's uh, let's now go under the bonnets. So under the bonnet, if I was to uh, have 
my car here as well, my 190 here as well, and we had all the three, all three bonnets open. There's really nothing to differentiate it. So we've got the the lovely KV6 engine. Uh, we've got our, br our brake uh, brake fluid reservoirs under this piece of trim here. Batteries in the same place. Yeah, I wonder if Dan's got a bit of venting through his uh, cap. There's got a bit of moisture around his um, expansion tank, so the cap could be could be blowing through there. But yeah, this is this is really nice and tidy. Um, and one thing I am going to have a look at in a minute is the boot because I've never shown you the boot of the 190 because it's full of car parts and uh, charity shop donations. So yeah, KV6 engine, uh, really you know reliable motor. As I said in a previous video, the key thing with these is to keep them uh, is to keep them well maintained. Get your oil services done at the right interval because if you don't, the engine's going to wear out. I don't think you can rebuild these. Um, and of course we've got our variable length inlet manifold which needs to be kept in fine fettle because they they do start rattling after a time i'm just gonna will the boot pop on the key no let's let's uh let's see if he's got a working boot button oh he has i'm so jealous i am so jealous of dan because his boot button actually works wow this is a clean car so we've got yeah, they're not the biggest boot. They're very shallow. They go back um, a little way, and you've got the um, the ski hatch, uh, and the back seats do fold down, so that's quite handy. We've got something, some kind of equipment there. Um, we've got the CD uh, auto changer, which I would suspect is redundant on this one because uh, it's got the auto market stereo. But yeah, they're 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 a fair size boot, but they're not massive. Um, because I'm sort of shipping car parts around today, I brought my um, transporter up here rather than uh, rather than the 190. I really wanted to get the 190 a good working workout, but um, it's just not practical for for carrying stuff around, and I don't really want to be, you know, carrying car parts. You can get wheels in, but you're you're filling the boot with with two wheels, and then you've got two on the back seat, so they're, they're not they're not great. You get your golf clubs in, you get your shopping in. Um, I know when we went to Cornwall, you know, you do struggle to get. Uh, you know, if, if the car's fully loaded with people, you struggle to get too much luggage in. So it's uh, quite limited. But do you know what? This boot, I think, this, the rear ends of these cars are are beautiful. Um, I think that you know they're 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 still even today. I know I keep saying this, they're still even today a really nice looking car. So without further ado, I'm going to get out and give them both a drive. Okay, so the first difference is just the, the, the uh, it's just how the car feels. It's you know you're not in a bucket seat, so it's they're buckety enough, but it is more like an armchair. So what you'd expect from a Rover, really quite pleasant. Now this is an auto. I think these are still 180 brake horse. Um, we'll get it up to speed in a minute. So this is first one we're driving is the uh, is the Connoisseur SE. I have to say, this is beautiful. Uh, the engine's really quiet. Um, Dan reported he had a misfire on this one. He changed the plugs and coils and uh, got it sorted out. We'll just get it on the, the main road and just see how it, how it compares to the, to the ZT. Just really easy motoring. It's, it's lovely. I've not even adjusted the seat, so even though it's not quite how I'd normally sit, I'm still because the seat's so comfortable. I'm not. Uh, I'm not feeling. Uh, not feeling it, shall we say? Brakes are good and sharp. So I've not, never driven an automatic um, ZT or 75. So this is. Pleasure. Well, I'm used to driving automatic because, of course, the transporter van is an automatic. Uh, but hopefully, you can hopefully you can appreciate how quiet the car is. Um, really, are cosseted. We'll just put the the aircon on just because we're getting a little bit steamed up. It's probably because I'm so excited. For it. Now 
that's pulling quite that's pulling quite hard but you don't notice it so the ride height and suspension on these is a lot um, is a lot higher so you, the suspension is not as stiff either so it's, it's more it's much more wallowy but so comfortable um, the ZT you notice every little bump dent crease in the road uh, and that's without accidentally going into a pothole Yeah, the engine just doesn't seem stressed at, at one little bit. Um, I'm in a in an area where I can't put my foot down yet, but we will we will we, will, we won't go mad because it's someone else's car. But we'll we'll open her up in a little while. Now I'm I'm further north than I normally am, so I'm about 90 miles up the road from where I live, uh, and I haven't got a nosebleed yet. Maybe we'll get that this afternoon. Um, what is the speed limit through here? God knows. But these, this this car is so much, and this this and this wood is just absolutely lovely. Um, I'm putting my foot down a little bit, and it just it just picks up really smoothly, gets to where I want it to be in terms of the speed. Um, Blimey, he's got a full tank of fuel. He, these are daily drivers, so Dan uses one car one week and one car the next, which is a really sensible way of doing it. Um, so that probably explains why he's got a full tank of petrol. I never never keep a full tank in mine, but um, that's because they're show ponies, not, uh, not dailies. Sharp brakes. Aircon seems to be working really nicely, got heat straight away. Um, nice motorbike in front, making a parpy noise, but let him get ahead so he's not interrupting our, our drive. But this is, yeah, this is just so smooth. Do you know, I'm, I'm a bit anti automatic, but just driving this today, I'm thinking, do you know what? is actually all right. So while we're waiting to get to uh, the main road, we'll uh, I'll update you about the 260. So no further progress on that this week. Um, uh, the garage where it is there, they're pretty pretty stacked up with work. So. Um, just wait for the front bumper to go back on and then they'll start they'll do the smoke test and see about the uh, the sort of inlet side and then um, and then uh, if that's not working then it's, it's, it's time to look at the ECU uh, one, I've not been able to take the 190 out this week um, it's been a busy week with work so that's why you haven't had much content from me um, but yeah just really waiting for the MOT on that now and that's when a little bit more work will happen to that one. New seats uh, will be going in, the seats you saw in the previous video will be going into that. I'll try and do a video on that um, this week. Um, yeah and the BRM that's uh, that needs to go for a drive that's that's uh, that's just sitting sitting doing nothing so need to, to give that a drive just to just to get it uh, get it going. I have noticed that the the, uh, the fan, typical Rover 200, Rover 25 issued, the fan has gone from working on all four settings to uh, only working on three and three and four. So uh, the resistor has blown on me already, so we need to get that sorted out along with the rear demist and the rear wiper. So there doesn't seem to be any power getting to the back. And one thing I will do is um, is get the, uh, the, the lights all checked to make sure the power is all getting to the back of the car. So if, the, if there's two things not working, uh, I hope we've got lights at the back of the car as well. Now I haven't got a sat nav on so I really hope I am going the right way because I don't really want to get lost. Although I do have a fairly good sense of direction. Just listen. It's so quiet. It's so, this car is so quiet. 
just been over a bump, didn't even feel it. And that's that's what a rover should be like. Yeah, I used to have a P6 and they had the uh, the hydroelastic uh, tube suspension. Sorry, the Dion tube, not hydroelastic. That's a different different uh, different British Leyland car. Um, you know, and that was that was exceptionally smooth. And this is this is the same rover. Really did a good job with making this into you know traditional rover. Comfortable inside, comfortable ride, but decent engine that gives you everything you need to, to you know pull the car along and we do have some dual carriageway coming up oh the kick down is very good long pedal travel on this and that's just shot up to 60 without any effort whatsoever so the power's the power's there um, well maintained car the bodywork looks crisp um, the interior is is superb um, it's uh, it's really nice to drive It's getting quite hot, so we'll turn that off. Hope we're going the right way back. Okay, let's get our foot down. Wow, that doesn't change until the red, almost before the red line. That's that's. These are decent. I think this is the. Get track gearbox. I may have got that wrong. Was the jack though? But yeah, you, you've got really good gearboxes on these cars, so there's no. I mean, the gear changes are as smooth as anything. Um, actually, puts my uh, the DSG box in the Volkswagen Transporter to shame. That is that is so smooth. And wow, that's got clever electronics because that that didn't change until I wanted it to. Just that that was really good. I'll have to do some more research on the Rover use of the automatic gearboxes because that is impressive. And I'm not an automatic fan. 
Well, maybe I'm going to become one. Who knows? Okay, so we'll get back. We'll go and get the uh, the contemporary out. We'll give that a spin. So we'll get this one out on the open road and see how it compares. This engine just seems a bit more grunty, um, and the cars are a very, like, very similar age. Um, Dan saying the uh, gearbox isn't quite as smooth. Maybe it's not. It still feels very good to me. Um, yeah, the seat's just slightly firmer, but other than that, other than the fact this has got dark charcoaly leather rather than a that sea of beige, um, it, it really is very similar indeed. Um, so yeah, not quite the equipment. We have got the uh, the window blind at the back, uh, which I forgot to mention. I did my walk round. Of course, that was a Rover feature. But still, yeah, absolutely delightful car to drive. Really, really very nice indeed and amazing these are what 2004 2005 so that again they're coming up for 20 years old these cars and if you just look at the interior look at the exterior of them they're yeah they've been well maintained but they defy their age they really do And that's why these cars are still getting good money because they're a usable modern classic. You can't get classic car insurance on these, I don't believe, but um, cause they're not quite different enough. So, yeah, I think it's only the 260s um, you can get classic car insurance on at, at this stage. But um, they are a modern classic to us in the MG Rover fan club, definitely. Another set, a lot of traffic lights around here. have some air blasting just for a second we're getting a bit steamed up still excited as you can probably tell aha green lights yeah the engine on this one's definitely throatier which I quite like um, but the gearbox is still urgent the uh, the ride is still comfortable and it's just been an absolute pleasure driving these two cars this morning I just want to get this one uh, give this one some kick down as well see if it responds the same way because the connoisseur um, responded seriously well on the kick down and that say the red line was hit before it changed down which a lot of modern automatics don't do that you is changing as quickly as it possibly can. Um, whereas this, or these rather, like, you know, that's that's you're getting that full power out of the engine before you get a change. You have got you can with these gearboxes, you can drop it down into four third or seconds. You have got a bit of um, a bit of bit more manual control than having some where you maybe just drop down one gear or go into sport mode. But I can really see why Dan runs these two um, 75s as daily drivers because they're just they're really good. Um, I don't know what these are like on on economy. Uh, being the auto, I know the the 190. That's that's really driven around town um, a lot, and I don't get much out of it at all. But I I, I would imagine it seems like a decent gearbox, even though it's an auto. You're still going to get a fairly respectable economy from it. Yeah, if you want a car just to commute to work and you've got a bit of a drive, these would be absolutely ideal. Oh, we can just kick down. Right, let's see how this one compares. 
gentlemen's lounge on wheels I think some people uh, affectionately call rovers um, auntie rover the contemporary yeah it's it's a lot more modern inside and I say Dan has changed the dash and the trim on this so we have got the the wood on the steering wheel we've got the, the wood on the dashboard uh, but it's yeah they do what they say on their, their badges, yeah, the, the Contemporary was slightly lower range, um, Connoisseur SE of course being the, the top of the range of the regular um, 75s, the, the Vanden Plus long wheelbase or limousine um, was the range top, but of course they're a much, uh, much rarer car, so of the, of the mainstream 75s, the, the Connoisseur SE is the the top one and that's what Dan's got and then he's got a contemporary as well but if you're looking you know if you're scouring for one of these if you're looking on eBay class car and classic auto trader depending on how much equipment you want either they're gonna give you a very serviceable daily driver which is a modern you know the modern classic so we'll get this one back and then we'll uh, We'll, uh, we'll hand the car back to Dad, but uh, thanks very much to him for letting me uh, drive his cars. So what a pair of fantastic drives. So thank you so much to Dan uh, for letting me uh, take his cars out um, and also taking the uh, the Vortex wheels off my hands. So yeah, really good. Uh, they're just lovely cars, aren't they? We, really important we keep these cars on the road. Um, there, there have been too many broken in the past, but I think hopefully that's stopping now. So. Thank you, to, thank you for watching, see you next time and uh, continue to like and please do subscribe, bye bye.